outside. None of us are perfect. I made the error of not quite, well, as I was dropping all the circuits in, I obviously didn't quite get the right uh, legs of the ring and I got them um, around the wrong way. And so when I went to turn them on, they just both tripped out. And so strip them all out. I know what the results are from my EICR reading. <clears throat> and then managed to find them again. And I'll pop them back in, it should be all be fine. But yeah, we all make mistakes and that's what I've done. I knew instantly that's what I'd done because it was working fine before. There was no RC tripping. I, I knew it wasn't the appliance or anything like that. I knew it, it was me. I made the error. And then we've got two, we've got one unfused spur off one on, on, on one ring circuit and one unfused spur on another ring circuit. I didn't want to put them on their own circuits because that one is actually on the first floor. It's just a single socket in the bedroom. And this one is a double socket in the ground floor with the ground floor sockets. So to me, it made sense just to keep it rather than put an extra circuit in for the spur. Right, you might think uh, this might be over the top, but <clears throat> I've got a couple of ring circuits here and there is, and I verified, one unfused spur from the consumer unit on the ground floor sockets, which does one socket in the lounge, one double socket. And this one does one double socket in the bedroom on the first floor. Now, rather than putting them both on their own radial, which to my, you know, out the cost, it outweighs the cost, does cost, doesn't it really? Putting just that one double socket on a 16 amp, another RCBO, and putting this one on a 16 amp RCBO. I've put it on, this is where it was before, it was off of the ring circuit. They tapped off the ring circuit, ring final at the consumer unit. So I've just put a label on it. So the next spark knows that that is just a, you know, a spur. And that one's just a spur off the ring final. This one is a 20 uh, now. Um, I don't know if you remember that when I came, this was a job where the builder had done a, a builder had done the electrics on their extension over lockdown and it made the ring final readings huge and the maximum ZS was exceeded, exceeded by quite a lot. Now, some of you might go, oh yeah, but it's on RCD, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. But it didn't need to be, we don't design circuits like that. We don't just rely, just because it's an RCD, we go, oh yeah, it's fine, it's fine. It could have been designed so much better. In this instance, um, the, you can walk from the consumer unit right to the extension in the basement. You can literally walk. And so it was poorly designed. Um, and there were multiple, the builder had done, rather than keeping it uh, as a ring final, he had done multiple unfused spurs. Um, so I put a, a B20 amp RCBO in, not only because of the multiple unfused spurs, but also the ZS value is now no longer exceeded with the B20 um, uh, RCBO. 